Howdy guys, got a video here for you today on a brand new rifle coming to the channel and this one is going to be on the Epic 2. So the brand name is Epic and the model number is 2. But there we have it. Before we get started, this particular rifle was purchased through the Crawley Surplus store using my own money. Now I buy all my rifles through the Crawley Surplus store simply because, in my opinion at least, they're the best RFD in the country. They've got a fantastic amount of stock, the people in there are nice, helpful and friendly, and overall I just think they provide a fantastic service. I will leave a link to the Crawley Surplus store in the description below, so if you're interested in checking out an air rifle, you can follow the link below. With that said, the next thing that I would like to mention is that this rifle here does have a few add-ons or upgrades added to it, so what I think we'll do is just run through them first. So starting off with the back and then moving our way forward. At the back here we do have the adjustable bag rider which is this piece at the bottom. So just this piece here. This just allows you to adjust the elevation on the back of the rifle to get yourself in the right position for your targets. If I'm honest a really nice little upgrade. I do find myself using this quite a bit. This is the optional add-on one although it does come with one fitted from the factory. Just a fixed one but it just fits in there like so. I do also have the monopod fitted to the rear of this rifle, although if I'm being completely honest with you, with the adjustable bag rider I really haven't used this that much, so not something you probably need to buy if you're going with the adjustable bag rider. Moving forward from that, in the centre here we have two upgrades, so the trigger and then the grip. The standard grip is this one here, and if I'm honest, I really don't like these sort of Hogue style grips. They're way too thin and they just make the rifle feel a little cheap in my opinion. What I've gone ahead and done is just swap out for an Ergo Air Zero Angle Chubby Grip. The grip itself is just an AR style grip, although you do need to get the flat top version. The beaver tail style grips will work, although it does squash the beaver tail quite a bit and it's a little tricky to get on there. So you're better off just getting the flat top version. And then the trigger is just one of the triggers that I make. So this one is the one that fits on the FX rifles. And that just is a direct replacement for the original. The original one there's nothing wrong with. And the original one just looks like that. So it's just a standard trigger shoe. Fairly nice if I'm honest but I just prefer my ones. Moving on from that again, we do have a number of segment gauges fitted to this rifle. So we have the regulator gauge at the bottom here, and then the bottle pressure gauge at the front. Now this is obviously a tune-in rifle, so a good digital gauge on the bottom there is really quite handy. That just allows you to accurately set your reg pressure, and you can also watch to see if it's creeping or anything like that. I do really like these segment gauges, I think they're fantastic for the money. And they are just a direct replacement for the original analog ones. Again, nothing wrong with the analog ones, it's just a little tricky to see the exact reg pressure. Plus the one on the cylinder end, which is at the end of the rifle here, can be used to monitor how much air you're using per shot, your shot counter and all that type of thing. I do have a little discount code for the gauges, so if you're interested in that, I'll leave a link in the description below. But that's the new gauges fit to the rifle. Moving on from that we have the moderator and then the little Picatinny rail on the bottom. So the Picatinny rail is just an adapter. This is a UTI rail in the bottom. So I went ahead and just got an Atlas UTI to Picatinny adapter rail. But with that on there and now I can mount my standard bipod. Now the rifle itself does come fitted with the Arca rail as standard. But I just don't have an Arca mount for my Accutac bipods. And then lastly, the moderator at the end here. So this is the dedicated Epic 2 moderator. And as you can see there, hopefully, you can see a number of holes in it. So the moderator itself does have an internal core, and the core is vented to atmosphere. The moderator itself does a real good job of quietening the rifle down. And whilst it won't pick up on camera, you could easily shoot this thing in your back garden. The actual mounting point for the moderator is a slightly weird thread, so it's a large thread on the end here. So as you can see in the back of the moderator we do have this large thread along with the internal core. 
but from the factory you do get a little adapter piece here which screws on and then under this thread protector you do have a standard half inch UNF so you can just go ahead and mount whatever you want on the front there but I do like the dedicated epic moderator it's not super expensive, I think it's about £90, but it does a real good job of quietening the rifle down. And as I say, it's quite nice to see something interesting, like the holes in the side there venting it to atmosphere. Right then, so that's all the modifications or add-ons added to this rifle. What we'll do now is just discuss some of the things I like about the rifle, then move on to some of the things I don't. Right then, so the rifle overall I am really quite impressed with. Obviously it's a new manufacturer and I think they've done a fantastic job on engineering this particular rifle. Adjustability has obviously been a key factor in the design of this rifle and the rifle overall is super adjustable. So starting at the back here we have an adjustable butt piece, adjustable cheek piece. So the adjustments you just simply loosen the lock screws then you can either adjust the butt piece in or out, whatever you prefer, then lock it off with the screws. Same with the cheek piece at the front there. And then obviously we have the hammer spring adjuster in the side there. And then on the other side we also have the externally adjustable regulator. So this is our regulator. I will say this is a sub 12 pound rifle. And from the factory the regulator was located just under the front rail. So about here. All you need to do to rotate that round is degas the rifle turn the cylinder around and then gas the rifle back up again. You do need a specialized tool to adjust the regulator. So this is just one I made and that just fits in there. And then you can adjust the regulator both up and down whilst the rifle is pressurized. I did try and ask Epic for the actual official tool, but they never got back to me. So I just made my own. I'm not quite sure how long it's gonna take for them to be commercially available. But if you did want to adjust your regulator, you could use a set of pliers or something like that. Moving on from that, the rifle itself feels really, really solid. It obviously does have a foldable stock at the back here. So if we push this button, the stock folds around and locks into position. Nice and securely like that and folds up into a nice small package. With the stock extended, it clicks into position with a nice satisfying click. And then there is absolutely no movement or wobble in the stock. It's absolutely rock solid, so you have no issue with the actual stock being a bit flimsy. Tons of mounting points for slings and stuff like that on there as well. So if you need a nice little compact rifle, maybe to chuck in a backpack or something like that, it really does fold up quite nicely. So there we have it. The rifle does also have quite a number of nice features on it as well. So it has a tensioned barrel system, meaning that the barrel itself is always being stretched into position. And what that supposedly does is just help with barrel harmonics. I know at the moment in the FAC world, there's quite a few people interested in tensioned barrel systems. And this rifle comes fitted with one from the factory. You can adjust the barrel tensioning with the special tool. So this is just one I made up, but you can adjust the tension from the factory it's set at around 20 newton meters although you've got between 18 and 24 that's your sort of little range of adjustment there other than that you do also have a very interesting little valve set up in the middle here you can adjust the valve travel as well as the valve return spring tension so that's another real nice feature other than that the rifle features a nice high quality unchoked cz barrel now some people like an unchoked barrel some people don't in my personal experience, it just depends on the barrel. I've had some absolutely blisteringly accurate unchoked barrels, and I've also had some absolutely useless ones. So I just think it depends on the actual barrel itself. This one seems to be fairly good. You'll see the accuracy results very shortly. But this one does seem to be a real nice high quality CZ barrel. So that's about it. The rifle itself does feel super high quality. Everything feels nice. Everything fits nicely. And overall, I am really quite impressed with the rifle. Shooting experience is fantastic. The trigger's great. And overall, I'm quite happy with how adjustable this thing is. The next thing we'll talk about is some of the things I dislike about the rifle. 
So the first thing I would like to mention is the magazines. Now the magazines themselves are real nice high quality. They're full aluminium construction. So you have an aluminium case and then an aluminium drum. But sometimes when loading the pellets into the rifle, the magazine feels awful notchy. It's obvious that some of the pellets are being damaged by the magazines as you load them into the barrel. Now I have got another magazine on order, so hopefully my next one will be a little better. But for now, this particular magazine was causing me some issues. And you could see it when you were shooting the rifle. Sometimes if you loaded the pellet and it felt notchy going into the barrel, you knew you was going to get a flyer. The next thing I'm not too keen about on this particular rifle is the fill probe. So the fill probe itself sometimes leaks. What I think it is, is this shoulder here is a little too far back and it doesn't seat correctly in the o-ring in the fittings. Now I've tried both the best fittings, so this is a best fittings fitting, and also my fittings, and they both sometimes leak. It's not all the time, but sometimes when you go to fill the rifle up, You'll open the air on your bottle and suddenly air will just pour out of the joint between the two components. What I have to do is sort of remove the probe and then put it back on in a different place and sometimes it works again. So they are a little temperamental, or it is on this particular rifle. And before you ask, yes I have changed the o-rings in all of my fittings and it still does the same thing. The next thing I'm not too keen about on this rifle is having the gauge in the end of the cylinder. This is something I really don't like. It means that you have to look down the barrel of the rifle in order to see your fill pressure. So here we have the gauge. This is obviously a Sigma one. As you can see there, 165 on the gauge. But I really don't like having to look down the end of the barrel to see the pressure in the rifle. I might end up making sort of a little angled gauge bracket on the side there so I don't have to look down it. And then the final thing that I want to mention as sort of a mini negative about this rifle is that when I first bought the rifle it was terribly inefficient. So I was getting between 45 and 50 shots from a 300 bar fill. Now this particular rifle is obviously a sub 12 pound rifle. And 45 shots from a 300 bar fill is pretty unheard of. Now I will say that the cylinder is awful small, so it's only 97 cc's. However, with a little bit of adjustment with the valve, I managed to get that efficiency much better. So as it sits now, I'm getting around 40 shots from a 200 bar fill, and about 85 from a 300 bar fill. Again, not a major issue by any means, but one that I thought I'd point out. With that all said and done, what we'll do now is I'll take you down range and I'll show you what this particular rifle can do. Right then, and here we are all set up at Pete's Airgun Farm in the 50 yard range. We've got an A4 target set out on the back wall, and we're shooting 5 shot groups using JSB shorts straight through the magazine. The pellets themselves are unweighed and unsalted, so we're just taking them straight out the tin, putting them into the mag, and then shooting them down range. And hopefully from the video you should be able to tell that we've got a new camera set up. So I've gone ahead and bought myself a trigger cam. Hopefully it'll make the videos a little more interesting to watch. I do have some big plans for the trigger cam, so hopefully we can make some good video series from it. It will take a little bit of getting used to and a little bit of time to get the most out of it, but hopefully it will be a good tool in the arsenal. And I have got a really interesting series planned, but you'll have to stay tuned for that. For now though, back onto the Epic 2, and I am really quite happy with how this rifle is shooting. This is obviously a out of the box rifle with very little modifications done to it. We obviously do have our little add-on pieces, and I did make the rifle a little more efficient by adjusting the valve, but apart from that I haven't really got into the rifle. The groupings themselves are nice and tight, although every now and again we do get a flyer. I'm pretty sure the flyers themselves are caused by the magazine, as every now and again you do feel the cocking arm become a little notchy as you push the pallet in. Pretty much every time that the cocking arm feels notchy, the next pellet is a flyer. So I'm going to either have to give the magazine a little polish up, or hopefully when the new one comes, the new one is a little better. But for now, we're just shooting the rifle with the mag we got. 
And I will say that the rifle itself was a little better when single shot loading. If you just thumb the pellets into the breech, the groupings did get a little tighter, although I didn't do any single shot loaded groups on camera, as you don't actually get a single shot loader with the rifle. But there we have it, there's the groupings at 50 yards, so now we're going to move the rifle a little closer to 30. To be honest with you, I don't really shoot much at 30 yards because I have a 50 yard range available to me. So all of my testing's done at 50 yards, but it is always nice to see how the rifle performs at the closer distances. And as you can see from the 30 yard groups, as soon as you close the distance in a little, the groupings do get a lot tighter. No more random flyers, and pretty much all the pellets are touching. And again, hopefully with a little more tuning, we're going to be able to make the rifle a little better. I am quite looking forward to experimenting with the barrel tensioning system, and hopefully when all's said and done, we can make the rifle super accurate. But for now, that's pretty much all the shooting footage I've got for you, so we'll take you back over to the bench, and we'll finish out the video. Right then, and here we have the groupings from 50 and 30 yards. This is obviously at 50 yards, so we're doing 5 short groups using JSB short pellets. The groups themselves are fairly tight. We most are under a 5 pence piece or close to it. Although we did get a few flyers. So the flyers were caused by the magazine, I think. But overall, I am quite happy with how this rifle shoots for an out-the-box gun. There is obviously some improvements to make to it, and hopefully with a little bit of adjustment and tuning, we can get the groupings a lot tighter. The best group on this piece of paper is probably this one down at the bottom here. If we take our calipers, you can see that's probably a 12.5, something like that, 12.5mm group edge to edge. So an 8mm centre to centre, so really not that bad. The rifle's obviously got it in it. When moving the rifle a little closer to 30 yards, you can see that the groups do tighten up quite considerably. I think this one is the first one we shot and this one was the last. But again, you can see how tight they are at 30 yards. Again, 5 pence piece for scale. For those outside the UK, a 5 pence piece is 18mm in diameter. But all of these groups here fit well under a 5 pence piece. So really quite happy with how this rifle performs straight out of the box. So there we have it. Right then, so here we have a few of the components I thought some of you may be interested to take a closer look at. So we have the trigger, we have the valve, hammer, and then the hammer spring assembly. So starting off with the trigger, this is our trigger cassette here. Nice and simple, comes out in one piece and is fully adjustable. As the hammer comes back, pushes down on this piece here, and locks the trigger into position. Then as we pull the trigger, you can see the trigger fall away there. So really nice and simple. Looks like it works absolutely beautifully. And the trigger on the rifle is really nice to use. Moving on to the hammer, hammer spring and valve. First thing I want to take a look at is the hammer spring assembly, this piece here. So the tuners among you will know exactly what this is. But for the less in well informed, this is a spring stop guide or an SSG. So the spring in the middle here is held captive by two pieces. And these two pieces are this one here. Then this piece here, you can see the pin running through the center of the two components. And what this does is remove any and all hammer spring preload on the valve. So in other words, the hammer is not being pressed into the valve by the hammer spring. There is just a little gap there. And what that does is greatly improve the efficiency of the rifle. So the hammer is no longer being forced against the end of the valve. There's a little bit of wiggle room there. The hammer itself is nice and simple. It's just a cutaway, fairly light, nice for the sub-12 market. And I'm guessing the FAC ones produce an awful lot of power. And then finally we have the valve. So the valve is probably the most interesting piece. Right then, and here we have the valve fully disassembled. So I'll give you a quick look at all the individual components. We have the valve body here, along with the valve pin, the valve stop, and then the valve return spring. So this valve here is adjustable. You can adjust the valve spring tension and also the valve travel. Both are adjusted at the same time. If we take a closer look at the valve pin itself, 
your valve pin does house a small hole, this one here, so the back of the valve is always bled off to atmosphere through the transfer port. So if we take a close look at the valve stop here, hopefully you can see that, but in the very end there, there is an o-ring. This seals around the back of the valve pin, like so. Then the valve itself seals within the valve body on this edge here. So this hole is always bled to atmosphere through the transfer port and barrel. And then when we take a shot, high pressure air can travel through this hole here into the back of the valve and force it closed. Epic call this system their balanced valve and I think it does work really quite nicely. So I'll just put that together and show you how that works. So we have our valve, push that through the center there. We'll add our valve return spring. And then our valve stop this piece here, and then screw it all together. So this is pretty much the factory setup or how I received my rifle. And as you can see there, when the hammer hits this side of the valve, so the hammer hits here, the valve opens and allows high pressure air through here, through the transfer port, and then pushes a pellet out the end of the barrel. The valve travel is adjustable by this little screw here. So we can limit the valve travel if we would like to. Limiting the valve travel in my experience on this particular rifle improved the consistency and efficiency of the rifle. So as you can see there, the valve it has only a little bit of travel now. So the valve, or the hammer I should say, hits the valve, then it opens, and then forces itself closed. If I'm honest, to adjust the valve it is a little bit of a pain as you do have to disassemble a lot of the rifle. So as you can see here, all of the trigger needs to come out, the hammer, the hammer spring assembly, as well as the air tube at the back here. I've found no other way, maybe if you took the gauge off, but it's far easier just to get something in here and push the valve out the back. So it is a little bit of a pain to adjust, but it does give you a good amount of options when you're tuning your rifle. And as I said, when I first got the rifle, the valve was pretty much flush with the base here and adjusting it in to about there to give us roughly two millimeters of valve travel pretty much doubled the shot count on the rifle. So I was quite happy with that. With that done, that's pretty much the valve. What I think we'll do next is disassemble the barrel and I'll show you the tensioning system. Right then, so here is the barrel and the tensioning setup. We obviously have our barrel. We have this collar here, which is floating on the barrel. It does have an O-ring, so there is a little bit of resistance to it. This end screws into the block, and then this end is just a capping nut to act as something to pull against. This piece here is our tensioner for this end. So this simply screws onto the barrel. And then once we have our calm fiber installed like so, the calm fiber itself is really hard to compress, so in effect the barrel is pulled from both ends. So this is our tensioning setup. The barrel itself is a CZ and choked barrel, and from the shooting results you can see it's fairly accurate. Some people get worried about the unchoked barrels, they sort of say that they're not as accurate as choked barrels. And if I'm honest with you, I've had both. I've had some absolutely phenomenal choked barrels and some very inaccurate choked barrels and the same for the unchoked variants. I've had some absolutely blisteringly accurate unchoked barrels and some absolutely rubbish barrels. So if I'm honest with you, from my point of view, it just depends on the quality of the barrel and just the luck involved. But for me personally, an unchoked barrel isn't a negative point. But anyway, so the setup goes as follows. We put the barrel through there, get that pushed onto the end. Then we take this piece here and screw that onto the end of the barrel. As we do it up, you can feel that the both ends bottom out on the calm fiber tube and any further tightening will want to compress the calm fiber tube or stretch the barrel. At this point, what we'd need to do is use our special tool Put that into the end of the barrel, so as you can see there it has four holes. This tool just has two pins that fit in like so. And then at this end we have two flats on this piece that we can add a 17mm spanner to and then tighten it up. 
At this stage here, the barrel is ready to install into the rifle and then get the end torqued up to our required torque. So I'll bring our block back, get the barrel screwed into the end there. And then again, we can bring back our special tool, get that put into the end, and then we can get that done up. So as you can see here, 20. So hopefully the camera picked that up, but you should have heard a nice snap from the torque wrench. And that means the torque is now set to 20 newton meters. To detension the barrel, you do have to take it out of the block. So when you try and unscrew it, it will just unscrew from the block here. Then you use a 17 mil spanner on them flats just to loosen it off. Right then, so that's pretty much going to do it for this particular video. I really do quite like the Epic 2. I think it's got some really nice features on the block. I really like the adjustable valve, the SSG on the hammer. And overall, I am really happy with how this thing is constructed. The only thing I didn't want to take apart for the video was the regulator. And that's simply because at the moment I don't have any seals for the rifle. So if I nick an O-ring or something like that in disassembling it, it's going to be a bit of a pain. Not to worry though, a full disassembly video will be coming for this particular rifle. And I'll show you how to do things like get the valve out, get the reg out, all that sort of thing. But for now, the Epic 2 gets a thumbs up from me. So with that all said guys, that's pretty much going to do it for this particular video. Thank you very much for watching, I hope it's been useful, and we'll see you in the next one.